were asked to calculate the cell potential when given the following molarities. In the previous video, we went over how to find the cell potential under standard conditions. We're going to need the value we found to figure out part B. Recall that the molarity is 1 under standard conditions. Since our given molarities are not 1, this is how we know we're finding the cell potential under non-standard conditions. To find the cell potential under non-standard conditions, we must use the Nernst equation where this refers to the cell potential under standard conditions, which is what we previously found in part A. This N refers to the number of moles of electrons, and Q is the reaction quotient. We can plug in what we found in part A. Next, we'll find N. Recall the number of electrons we had were six, so N is six, and we'll plug that in. We can now find Q. Recall that in a reaction quotient, we do not include liquids or solids. So we will only have this product on top. And it's raised to a power of two since our coefficient is two. This reactant goes on the bottom and it's raised by a power of three since our coefficient is three. We can now plug in the molarities that were given in the question. Plug in 1.5 here and 0 0.10 here. Square the top, cube the bottom, then divide. We have our value for Q. Be careful with the math here. To avoid calculator mistakes, we will do these highlighted parts separately since we really are multiplying these two. So divide this first. Then take the log of this value. Multiply these two values, then subtract. Don't forget about your sig figs. We'll round up to two sig figs since that was the lowest amount of sig figs given in the question. Our cell potential is 0.45 volts. I've created resources for you to succeed in chemistry this semester. So head over to melissamaribald.com to purchase them because I filled chemistry so you don't have to.